first let me tell you about the kinds of uh, ganatantras which were there and how do we know so we know yeah. this because of panini's rashtradhyay rashtradhyay is a book of grammar so we should not ideally know anything else except grammar from that book but panini has given such wonderful all embracing examples from all parts of society culture and polity that you get to know a lot about all these things so he yeah. tells us how these gan tantras were managed so this there was a gan that means the collection of people this collection of people consisted of everyone so that whole thing whenever you study or think of anything indian what comes up caste what comes up varna and jati as we have already discussed so people yeah. from all varna and jatis belonged to this gan and uh, you know uh, they could be uh, they could be brahmins or kshatriyas or potters or weavers or everything anything they all had an equal say now when how everyone does that include women women is a very interesting question because you know in the uh, rigved is mentioned the vidhata the vidhata is a okay. collection of people or a place where people from the entire gan spoke and decided was to be what was to be done in that community in that clan and it is very clear not just from the rigved but from the other vedic uh, other mentions in the vedic corpus that women were a uh, welcome in the vidhata and they used to speak their mind in it however in another place there are actual descriptions of voting where there are actual descriptions of voting over there for me the jury is out and i think more research is necessary to know whether women voted that they spoke that they were there they had a presence unequivocally yes did they vote yeah. i am not sure okay we don't know yet we don't know okay. yeah maybe you know uh, as uh, i said i mean people who are uh, not blinkered by many things have to read a lot of these compositions again to arrive at some conclusion so anyway to get back to the way in which uh, these uh, gunners operated so there were two three ways in which they operated one was that they all got together and elected a king they elected a king who they thought would be good for their security administration to, to take care of everything the king had to be an ex exceptional person who could not only he had to be strong he had to be noble he had to be uh, you know kind of uh, thinking about the welfare of others then only would that would everyone vote for him so this was uh, as i said electing the king was mentioned uh, in the rigved also so this is one method the second method is for everyone to get together and elect a sabha and a samiti sabha consisted of those people who were aristocrats from big good families and rich people samiti was common people so it's kind of a lower house and upper house you know a, a faint parallel or, or indeed not a faint parallel at the root the idea is the same because today in the rajya sabha we have uh, nominated people or we have indirect election and for the lok sabha we have direct election and you know in the rajya sabha we have people who have done well in various things and then they come there directly without election so sabha and samiti used to give direction to the clan and this sabha and samiti were elected in the third one there was a kind of uh, oligarchy where so in the sabha and samiti so there is no uh, no one leader no centralized leader no that's the, a very interesting system yes really but i will tell you how uh, it worked how this sabha and samiti worked we'll just uh, talk about it okay the uh, next one was uh, the oligarchy in which there was a group of people the vajjis the lichavis uh, their uh, oligarchy is very famous and um, it's mentioned in um, sanskrit hindu sources and buddhist sources yeah, yeah. so these are very famous people you can read about them their city vaishali their uh, assembly halls their treasury houses all these yeah, are yeah. very very famous so yeah. these were the oligarchs then uh, we have to come to that idea of okay how did these people then actually run things when there's a king no problem the king runs things and remember if the king is not liked by the people that king is removed and someone else is elected according to the rigved yeah, yeah. okay so this is uh, well elected monarchy in a way which is a very strange concept we don't I understand mean, it, it now this doesn't sound like a king then this sounds like a whatever 
president or a prime minister. We're just using the word king. Yeah, maybe, you know, uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, um, if uh, there was this Sabha and Samiti and there was this Sangh, there was no, uh, you know, hereditary leader or anything, but there was somebody who would be called the Ganpati. Ganpati was normally an elder. Then there was somebody who was called the Sangh Mukhya. These Sangh Mukhyas were elected. Then there was somebody okay. who, who was called uh, Santhagar. He would take care of the treasury. Then there was uh, somebody who would, uh, you know, take care of the security aspects or someone like a Senapati. They were advisors on different aspects. And these were elected. How do we know that they are elected? Because Panini, while giving grammatical examples, explains the whole method of election. So, they used small uh, wooden chips or uh, wooden pieces which were called chalakas for voting. And there was one person who was entrusted with counting them. He was called the Salaka Gahapati. So, he was the election commissioner, chief election commissioner of the day. He used to count the votes. There were also, like in any group, there were political parties because, you know, people can never agree. They always have different opinions yeah. and people coalesce yeah. around different opinions. <laughs> so, there were also these uh, political parties and uh, this is how the Ganasang actually managed its affairs. I have been talking about the Lichavis. These were the preeminent power in terms of the Ganatantras. And there was also a confederacy of many of these Gantantras, which was called the Vajji Confederacy. The Lichavis were the leading confederacy or the leading Gansang in that. They were a very strong power in the Mahajanpad period, around the 8th to the 5th or, uh, yeah, 8th to the 5th century before the common era. So again, remember, we are talking of times before Pericles. We are talking of times even before Solon. I had spoke, people sometimes speak of Solon in the 7th century. Although that's really wishful thinking and that is really talking up Solon. I don't see any evidence of Solon being a Democrat. And, you know, in fact, mm. Pericles has been condemned by Thucydides for being a dictator, a monarch, an autocrat and just doing what he wants to. So Pericles himself is a bit dicey and Solon is more than dicey. Watch the full episode on the Vak Indian History YouTube channel and podcast.